Welcome back. So this is the uh, setup that I forgot to set up. So uh, much of this is already familiar to you. Um, so this is just a, a, a coil of wire. It's a, nothing special. Um, it's just like the other coil of wire. It's only this a copper coil. And um, so you have seen oscilloscope before, and you have some understanding that what the oscilloscope is supposed to show is a voltage as a function of time. The x-axis is voltage and, sorry, x-axis is time, and the voltage is the y-axis. You have seen all of that before, right? Um, and so what it is measuring right now is voltage change across this coil of wire. What do you expect that to be? Zero, right? It's a conductor, should be at the same voltage. And when I shake it, it doesn't really change all that much, right? I mean, all of that is as expected. Um, now, this is what I want to show you, that once you have a magnet in play, then it changes. So, uh, let's, do I need to, I think I need to put the right amount of exposure where you can see both the coil and the signal on the oscilloscope. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, uh, yeah, maybe I can use this as base. I'm going to put this magnet on some ground somewhere. So, you know, even though you can't see it, you can kind of visualize that there's a magnetic field coming out of this, like a very strong dipole magnetic field. And when I move this in the, in that, within the magnetic field, something interesting happens with that electric signal. So when I dropped it, when I drop it, it went down, right? And when I pull it out, then the voltage goes up. And um, it actually, it, um, it's directional. So if I change these two connections around, then this time when I push it down, then the voltage will go up. When I push it down, the voltage goes up. When I pull it out, the voltage goes down. So, okay, where is that coming from? So, so this is what your textbook calls motional EMF. And I've been trying to get rid of that word EMF. So what I'm trying this semester is motion induced the voltage. So, so, uh, so you know, let's try to understand how that's happening here. What I'm telling you is that you already know everything you need to know to understand this motion induced the voltage. Um, there's, uh, so you know, it's just a case study of something that you already know. Motion induced voltage. So in this particular setup, what you have is uh, you have a very strong magnet, which is generating magnetic field. Let's just say the, the upper end is the north end. Then there's a pretty strong magnetic field coming out of here. And I guess if I'm drawing the field correctly, then it should look like, well, it should look like a dipole field, right? This is the magnetic field from this strong magnet. And what you are seeing is that when I move a coil of wire, so let me just illustrate with this uh, um, three coil wire thing. I mean, you know, my actual coil has more, but when I take this coil of wire and either move it up or down, that generates a voltage. So when I take this, and either move it up or down. Then when I hook up something to one end and the other and measure this with a voltmeter, then I actually measure, the, measure a difference in voltage here. Whereas when I didn't have magnet, there was no voltage difference. When I don't have this magnet, then I can move it down all I want. I mean, I can move it down all I want, but there will be no voltage generated. It's only when there's this magnet here that you see voltage generated. So the magnet must be playing some role. So how does this uh, presence of magnetic field generate voltage around this loop? Like how would you begin to analyze that?
Uh, what kind of things does the voltage involve? Uh, not difference in electric field. Okay, so voltage is electric potential. So if you are looking at difference in voltage, there is difference in electric potential. But how is uh, that difference in electric potential related to other quantities? You know, you should remember at least two different ways that voltage is related to other quantities. That no one remembers? You guys are not going to do well in the final, are you? I mean, how is the voltage related to other quantities? This is uh, something that you should have memorized as a matter of definition. So that's the definition of voltage, that whenever you see voltage difference, that, that means there's an electric field. Not change in electric field, but an electric field. So that if you integrate the line integral, E dot DL, from point A to B, well, that is a voltage. Oh, there's a minus sign here somewhere. But you know, whenever you have non-zero voltage, that means that there's some kind of electric field. And, and the other relationship was relating to energy. But actually, this is what I want to look at. So this is what you are seeing here, that the fact that you see voltage difference there, as I move the coil up or down, means there is something equivalent to an electric field within this coil of wires as I move it up and down. But I mean, I'm, there's no battery here. So there's nothing that's actually providing that electric field. So there's something that's equivalent to electric field, but not quite an electric field. Have you seen any quantity that's uh, you know, equivalent to electric field? As in, it does a similar things that electric field can do, but it's not an electric field. What have you seen? Magnetic field, not just the magnetic field by itself, but V cross B. This um, can act like electric field. Do you know why? Do you know how I know? It's being added to electric field, which means grammatically, these two must be on the equal footing. Right? It bo works both in grammar and math. <laughs> you do not add the two things together unless they are same in kind. Like they have to have the same unit, they have to essentially be doing the similar things. So yeah, this is V cross V. So this is what's called, your textbook calls it motional EMF. Or I guess um, you have to do the line integral of that to get the motional EMF. But this is related to, it's related to uh, what I'm going to try calling uh, motion induced voltage. So that's, uh, I guess, what I want to analyze here that um, as I move this up or down, that there is some direction of the V cross B that I can analyze this as well. As I go around this loop, each time I go around it adds up so that I, I should get something um, you know, that, uh, that can be measured as a voltage by oscilloscope. So let's, uh, um, for convenience's sake, let's say this uh, coil I'm going to have it move up with some velocity V naught. Um, all right. So I'm imagining the electric charges that are inside the wire. Um, let's just for simply this sake, let's imagine they are positively charged. I mean, they are not negatively charged, but I'm not talking about Hall effect, so I can just imagine they're positively charged. Uh, what's the direction of V cross B? Um, for one, actually, what's the direction of magnetic field? Kevin? Upward, okay. Yeah, that's an easy um, thing to observe for now. So we'll start out with that. So let's say we are, you know, we see that magnetic field is mostly upward, right? So that's why Kevin said upward. So let's just analyze it on that basis. Let's say that this magnetic field points up. Um, then Ooh, what do you get for V cross B? 
Not outward. Fui is upward, right? Magnetic field is also upward. Yeah, it's zero. If the two vectors point in the same direction, the cross product is zero. Yeah? Um, is, the, is the whole thing like one charge that has a velocity? Or is it, because before we were doing that, it's like the velocity was in the direction of the current, right? Yeah, but here, um, there's no actual current. Uh, I'm just uh, you know, physically moving it upward. Oh, okay. So the velocity of charge is the same velocity as the velocity of the coil. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah, it doesn't work. Um, so that means, I think actually, if you look at this um, magnetic field lines carefully, you can see that, okay, in the middle, they are di uh, straight up. But as you go out, it's not straight up. It's, uh, you know, look at this one that I've drawn here. It actually goes a little bit to the side, which means there's a longitudinal part and there's a perpendicular part. So, well, so, you know, take this entire direction of a magnetic field. And when you do V cross B, what's the direction of the V cross B? Here, into the board, right? So I guess this is what I do like. When I come around here, I want my V cross B to be out of the board. Because then as you go around the loop, the effect will be added, adding together. Um, is, that, is that the case? Yeah, V cross B. So this is the direction of magnetic field. Um, so V cross B is out of the board. So you know, and as you imagine going around the entire loop, if you're looking down from above, V cross B will be going counterclockwise. So that each, with each one of these loops, they add up. Okay? So yeah, so what that means is, um, so V cross B is going along the direction of the loop. So if you take the line integral along the loop, if you imagine doing something like this, you will get voltage. And that's the motion of voltage that you are seeing being measured by the oscilloscope. 